In this screencast, I'm going to be sharing my common place book that I have set up in Notion. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I have been doing a book club series over on my Substack where I'm going through Building a Second Brain, which is a book by Tiago Forte. <laughs> it's a pretty big one within the sort of productivity and creativity space. So if you haven't heard of it, well, where have you been? Uh, I'm so pleased that I get to introduce it to you, but I think quite a lot of people at this point are familiar with it. So rather than me just listen to the book and sort of absorb information into my brain, but do nothing with it, I've decided to actually implement the um, ideas that are within the book and share my experience over on my Substack through the articles that I write. So I'm going through the code process that Tiago defines in his book and code is an acronym. So it's C-O-D-E, which stands for Capture, which was my first article sharing how I'm capturing my notes. And then we've got O is Organize. So this is where I set up, if we just click over here, my commonplace book for my notes where I can begin to tag and organize things so that I can find information when I need it, where I need it sort of thing. And now we're moving on to the D, which is distill. So that article, um, the next article in the series for Distill will appear on my Substack here, which um, is not here yet because I need to record this video to add to the bottom of that article. So this is the show and tell part of my latest article. And if you haven't already, this commonplace book is available as a Notion template. So if you are one of the paid subscribers to my Substack, you will have got a copy of, uh, if we just go over here, of this Notion template. And I've done a previous video where I've shared how I created this template, how I've tweaked it for my own setup. So this is like a foundation that you can build upon. So do check out the accompanying blog post where I share this template and talk through what I've done. So my commonplace book is built from that template, but I've customized it to my needs. So please do use that template as a foundation, but make it your own so it fits in with your, uh, your life and how you want to use it, which is why I've shared how I created that template. So now we've got some of that kind of housekeeping out the way, let's do the show and tell part of Distill. So in chapter six of Building a Second Brain, Tiago Forte introduces us to this idea behind finding the essence of our work. So uh, one thing I have done that is kind of like a couple of tweaks that I've done to my commonplace book in terms of the notes that I make is I always like to add in a table of contents and it's super simple. You just do um, slash table of contents and it should come up once you start typing out table of contents and it's an advanced block so all that means is whenever you have a heading so an h2 an h i've got a lot of h2s but it could be an h1 oh sorry a heading one heading two heading three you <laughs> kind of like doing a bit of html talk there sorry i used to be a web developer but whenever you have any headings within your document uh it will automatically turn those headings into clickable links within your table of contents. And it's all dynamic, so it just happens on the fly. And it's a really neat little feature in able to be able to get to the essence, find the essence. So this is one thing that I'm doing within my notes to help me distill the information, distill my notes and find the essence. So now let's go to see my notes for chapter six. Now, real quick, how I've been taking notes is I am listening to the book on Audible. So what I will do is I'll, I've will i been going through it chapter by chapter. So I will listen to one chapter, make notes, write my article and then move on to the next one. So I've, that is my process and I will listen through on Audible once and use the clips feature within Audible so I can take and uh, like save a bookmark audio clip of a, a 
key piece of information or a process that he's introducing us to and I can write myself a little note so I can know what that clip is about without actually having to listen to it so that's one of the shall we say protocols that I'm using to do my audible book notes and then what I will do is when I have a bit more time so that I might be doing listening on the go so I might be um walking on the school run listening to the book and there might be something like walking home from the school run because <laughs> it's really hard to listen to things when you've got kids and they're talking to you and they're telling you about their day or what have you so when it's either walking back from dropping them off or walking to picking them up I might be listening to the audible book and I will make these little clips of notes that I in that I feel a key point so that's kind of like my on the go note taking but then when I'm ready to sit down and really get to like deep work shall we say I will re-listen to that chapter I will first look at the notes that I've made for the clips so uh, some of these sentences here like this quantum note taking see book blurb below that may have been quantum note taking as just a note clip within Audible, and then I've re-listened to that clip. I've gone and searched out the book and popped a blurb about that book below. So that's one way that I do it. But when I'm sitting down at my desk, I've got Notion open, and I'm actually typing the notes out. So I'll add in all of those clip notes first, and then I will listen to the entire chapter again, usually at two times speed. And I will type out key points or anything that jumps out at me because that second time that I'm listening to it, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that point. That was really, really good. I liked that. And I will, it gives me more of a chance to type things out in my own words, like why I liked a certain idea or what stood out for me. Or I might just make a word for word quote from what I'm listening to. So that's how I've been making my notes. Now, in chapter six, uh, so hold on, let's go back a step. So that is my capturing process for uh, audible books that I'm listening to at the moment. I'm just testing in this out. This is kind of the second time I've done um, researching an audible book and then writing my findings and experimenting in with ways in which I am implementing the um, principles within the book or the teachings within the book. So this is the second time I'm doing it and I'm kind of really refining my process for that now with this commonplace book setup and using a lot of Tiago's um, protocols for making notes more usable. So in chapter six, he introduces us to his concept called progressive summarization, which is highlighting but using tech to make the note more useful. And he says to think of it a bit like a pyramid that's being built from the bottom up. So here you can see my, my note taking is really coming into effect of how I'm kind of distilling the essence of what was in chapter six. Now what he says is distilling is a process for developing our ideas. So if we're thinking about that pyramid and we're thinking about the bottom layer, layer one, that is where we're saving only the best excerpts. So that is essentially what I have done here. These are the best excerpts or the things that really jumped out to me whilst I was listening that I've captured into my note. Then in layer two, so the next layer of the pyramid, this is where we're going to read through these excerpts and bold only the most important takeaways or key points. Now you're probably thinking at this point, yeah, but if this is all of your excerpt, why haven't you bolded anything? Okay, bear with me. Let me let me just finish sharing his pro process. So in the next layer, layer three, as we go up the pyramid, he says is to highlight or underline. I go for underline just because I can do control U on my laptop and it's quick and simple. Whereas to highlight things in Notion, I, I haven't figured out what a quick and simple shortcut is. Yes, you can do it, but it's mm, not as um, not as beautiful and elegant as just quickly control you for underlining stuff. So I've opted for underline, but basically he says to highlight or underline only the best of the best passages from layer two. So that is only underline things from the sentences or the excerpts that you have made bold. And you need to be 
very picky with his words about I don't want to plagiarize like his content completely so I'm saying you do need to be extremely selective about what makes the cut in terms of what you're going to highlight. So I really like the idea behind this process, but here's where I've tweaked things because um, he mentioned that the top layer will be where you do your executive summary based on the things that you've highlighted. But what I've decided to do instead is because I pay for the uh, Notion AI add-on, I can actually just select all of my notes that I've made for this particular chapter, and then I can ask AI to summarize them. <laughs> and um, I just got, I'm not gonna do that now because I have already asked AI to do that. And I wait for it, well actually, let's just show it in, in progress. So if I click summarize, and then it will think about it, and then AI is writing, and then it will start to write out a summary based on the notes that I have made. And I will just say insert below. And then what I can do is click on there, turn into, let's click on the six. Oh, let me just show that again because I'm going quite quickly. Click on the six dots menu to bring up these options here. And I'm going to turn it into a call out, Ta -da! which I then uh, took that from there, cut, and I actually pasted it at the top where I've got my um, chapter six heading, because remember we're using a table of contents so that we can click quickly navigate through our note taking. So it makes sense to have that at the top. And then I just added in an additional sentence so that I know if I come back to this at a much later date, like weeks or maybe even months down the line from now, I know that this summary isn't my own words. It's a summary that I got AI to write for me. And I did this while all of this note taking, I did this all in one sitting. It took me about I think it took me about 40 minutes or so listening through that chapter, pausing, making notes, rewinding and going back through things to gather all of this to the and add it like go off on a tangent to look up quantum note taking and so on and then come back to this and add to my notes and what have you. So once I'd done all of this note taking, I straight away got AI to make a summary of those notes or to summarize my notes so that whilst it's all fresh in my head, I can check through and see, did AI do a good job? Does it make sense? And yeah, AI did a really good job of summarizing my notes. Now there was a temptation for me to want to add in little bits that I thought, oh, I've like, I've seen a clever link here or a clever way of wording something. But actually that was just like my ego getting in the way and I just need to um, be really uh, ruthless, shall we say, with not adding stuff. AI did a good job of summarizing it and I should just stick with that and not be tempted to add to it. So based on that, this is where I actually decided to do my progressive summarization, as you can see. So I read through AI's summary and I only bolded parts of this paragraph that I felt were um, really highlighting some of the key points and key concepts. And then once I'd done that, I checked through just reading the bits that I bolded or made bold. And once I was happy with them, that's when I went through the third layer of progressive summarization where I underlined and I, I tested out doing the highlighting, but meh, yeah, it's a little bit more tricky, even though it, mem it remembers what your last uh, color option was. It's still a bit of a finicky um, shortcut codes on the keyboard. It's Yeah, it's just awkward. So control underline is easier, but I went through and um, underlined the best of the best from those um, bolded excerpts, like the things that really like, this is the essence, the absolute essence. So now this entire paragraph, 
this entire paragraph, which started off as the chapter discusses the concept of quantum note taking, where notes are seen as tools to be used rather than just collected. The process involves blah, 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 like it goes on for quite a while. That has been distilled down to notes are tools progressive summarization through several layers of highlighting for future use. And those sort of three little chunks really are the essence of what chapter six is all about. Now, yes, it is still worth listening to chapter six because you got a le- you got um you get a lot of context yes there are anecdotes and he tells a lot of stories and makes it very relatable but it's all of that stuff that brings context to why we're doing what we're doing and how we can use it in our lives and it gets us thinking about mm, if something's not quite right how would we tweak it like here i really liked Uh, his concept but I'm like "Mm, I think I could use AI to streamline some of this process and make my life a little bit easier and I can use things like table of context uh, contents in notion to again improve this idea behind not just progressive summarization but also behind um, if notes are meant to be tools, then we want to make our tool like the Swiss army knife <laughs> of notes and note taking abilities. So, yes, that is my show and tell segment of this article. I've tried to keep it succinct, which means I may have glossed over things, which if I have, just hit me up in the comments and I will, I'll be happy to elaborate further or sort of go into a deeper level if you feel like, oh, she's kind of glossed over something. Like there's loads more that I want to talk about. Like I've turned this um, AI summary, it, it's not just a call out block, but I've turned it into a synced block, which I've now got synced in other parts of my Notion workspace because these are just my book notes, but I'm writing articles based on the notes that I'm taking. And um, yeah, that is a project. Like my Substack writing is a project within my Notion workspace with the articles as tasks. Like it's a whole thing. Like there's so much all juicy, juicy stuff that I could share here, but I want to just stick to how I'm doing the progressive summarization and how I've sort of made some additions to my commonplace book. And on that note, someone is setting fireworks off in the background. So I'm going to say bye for now. Thanks for watching slash listening. And as I said, drop me a comment if you want me to go deeper on anything, if you feel like I've glossed over it. And yeah, 